Today's real talk, Life Beyond Cancer, is where we delve into the untold stories of courage, triumph, and profound life lessons that unfold after the battle. Join us for a raw, unfiltered conversations that explore the remarkable resilience and renewed perspective that define the journey beyond cancer. Because life doesn't just reshoot, it transforms. Welcome to another episode of the Life Doula Podcast. I'm Charity Marahomsar, your Life Doula, and today we have the honor of sharing a candid conversation with someone near and dear to my heart, a mother, a wife, an HR practitioner, a trainer, and also a cancer coach, a remarkable cancer survivor who has graciously agreed to share her journey with us, Patricia Lucea Lim Completo. Hello, Pat. <laughs> I'm thrilled and honored to have you here today. Thank you, Cha. I'm as excited as you are to be part of this vital conversation. Yeah, and so let's start by discussing, you know, that significant moment of crossing the finish line of your cancer treatment. Baka pareho kami dalawa mayak. <laughs> How did you approach rebuilding your life in the aftermath? Well, it was a process, Cha. I focused on small positive changes each day and leaned heavily on my support system. Rebuilding took time, but it was about finding that new normal. You know, I remember a podcast I had with Dr. Eves uh, Tanael, and he said, it's really about accepting and embracing the new normal. So I think I kind of, understand how that feels. Now, diving into the emotional journey, what emotion surprised you the most as you entered survivorship? Um, the emotions that surprised me the most, well, the mix of relief and anxiety was unexpected. While I was relieved to be done with treatment, the fear of recurrence lingered. <sighs> Oh, it's a complex emotional landscape. I must say that one is so familiar. So familiar. Navigating relationship post-cancer, we know this, can be very tricky. How did your connections with friends and family change? How did you handle those changes? Well, some relationships strengthened while others evolved. I learned to communicate openly about my needs and boundaries. That's very important. It's crucial to surround yourself with people who truly understand you and truly care for you. You know, I want to underline that fact because a lot of cancer survivors would always say, nobody understands how I feel, right? So did you um, experience, because I know you worked after you crossed the finish line. Mm -hmm. Did you experience any misconceptions or any biases at the workplace from people at work and from other people about life after cancer? And how did you address them? Well, biases, not really. But it was more on me proving myself to others that I am back to my old self. And that I can you know, still do the things that I used to do before. So it was more on me proving myself to others. So it was really internal. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, this is something that we share and discuss, discuss quite often. Let's give our audience a real picture of <laughs> <laughs> the physical aftermath of cancer treatment, and I just want to say, even years after the treatment, you still feel the physical aftermath. What adjustments or ongoing challenges do you face day to day? 
Uh, fatigue and physical changes were ongoing challenges. Physical challenges would include, of course, um, you know, my, my movements. Physical changes would be weight gain. Establishing a new routine. We will qualify was, that. <laughs> establishing a new routine is very important for me. Incorporating exercise and listening to my body be became crucial elements of my everyday life. I, I will use this as a chance to defend ourselves. <laughs> um, to the audience who are listening, you either go through a, a severe um, weight loss or a severe weight gain, depending on the type of cancer that um, you had and depending on the type of treatment that you had. So in our defense... <laughs> A lot or majority of the breast cancer survivors do gain weight. But then again, that's not an excuse, right? We still have to be able to find ways to move it right. Uh, just making that. It, it just good. requires a little extra effort on our part to lose that weight. Like pre-cancer, um, that was 30 pounds ago for me. <laughs> so... <laughs> Yeah, it, it just required a little effort for us to wait to gain that weight, uh, to lose that weight. Now, fear, coping with the fear of recurrence is almost like something we deal with every single day. It's a common struggle. How do you balance living in the present while acknowledging the uncertainties of the future? Ah, it's about finding that balance. I focus on the present, celebrate milestones, and stay focused about my uh, follow-up care. It helps me manage the fear and live my life more fully. I know it's easier said than done. Yeah. Um, now share with us a milestone or achievement that made you particularly proud in your life after cancer? Oh, reclaiming my life by returning to activities I used to do was a huge milestone. It reaffirmed that life after cancer is about rediscovering joy, creating a life of mission, and pursuing significance. Wow. Support systems. We know that during the cancer journey and even after, it plays such a crucial role. Can you tell us about the people or support communities, organizations that provided you invaluable support now during your survivorship years? My family, of course, friends, and cancer support groups like uh, Faithful Journey, I Can Serve, and my group, RT Beauties, were, played a vital role. Were, um, they, they provided resources and understanding and, of course, moral support. Yeah. Uh, communities are very important in this journey. Now, I, I do know that you went through a phase where you still continued with your corporate work. So... There, it was such a balancing act for you. So right. balancing work, personal life, and self-care can be really a juggling act. Hmm. How do you prioritize these aspects in your life beyond the finish line? Well, it was a learning process for me. Um, setting boundaries, communicating my needs at work, um, prioritizing self-care were you know, not, became non-negotiable for me. Um, it's about finding that equilibrium. I, I do want to emphasize that, Pat. Um, creating really, you know, very clear boundaries is important. Um, not just for cancer survivors, but, but for everyone. Right. But more so if you're a survivor. Um, you cannot expect that with the amount of energy that you have, you can spread yourself too thinly. So how has the act of saying no been for you because drawing boundaries means saying no to many things well as i mentioned earlier 
I would prove myself at the start that I am back to normal. But then I, I realized that I have to prioritize self-care and really have, I really have to communicate my boundaries up to what time I'd be working, what time I'd be shutting off my, la my laptop, what time I'd be going home. So that, that's very important. That's very, very important. Now, looking back, what aspects of your survivorship journey do you wish you had known more about uh, so you were better, you're better prepared um, just in hindsight? Well, I wish I had known more about the emotional aftermath and the importance of seeking professional help. I realized that understanding the holistic impact of cancer is crucial for better preparation. That's true. What about um, if you look at all the other tenets of wellness, um, what did you wish you knew more about? Like movement, nutrition, uh, mental and emotional housekeeping? Well, I knew I had to exercise. I knew I had to um, sleep well. But I think I wish I, I knew more about nutrition. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll discuss that. Um, just in a short while, you and I have journeyed together the past several years, and we both try to understand how to live above the wellness line. So Pat and I have journeyed together, trying out many things, right? Especially many things, <laughs> many things especially in the area of sleep. Right. And that's why... Pat and I have been into, and, and have up to now been doing aromatherapy. You talked about nutrition, movement, mental and emotional housekeeping, sleep, and stress management. Which of these did you intentionally incorporate in your lifestyle? And which of these are still works in progress? Well, I had to make sure that I developed habits. I made sure that I have a checklist that I th that reminds me what to prioritize every day. I make sure that I have an established morning routine and that morning routine would include my meditation, affirmations, um, hearing mass, and of course my essential oils. I start my day with my essential oils. Um, health and wellness checklist would include you know, drinking celery juice. Um, <laughs> uh, I make sure that I take in eight hour, eight um, glasses of water. And uh, what else? I, I would list down the time that I, I go to sleep. I make sure that I sleep before 11 p.m. You know, I, I remember a doctor who said all these lifestyle changes, a lot of times... People wait for an event like cancer, and, and that is true, right? But as we always say, it's never too late. But they, they say that one is never the same after cancer. I mean, change always happens, especially the person that you are. Is it something that resonates with you? Oh yes, um, life after cancer was a journey of self-discovery and alignment. After six years of survival and counting, I realized that it, it's very important that you are focused and very intentional with all these things that you need to change in your lifestyle. Ah, I do agree with that. But let's take this opportunity to talk about um, the first aftercare program that we are offering at Better Days Wellness mm -hmm. Center, Heal Strong program. What do you think about that? Is it something that's needed? Is it something that will come in really handy for cancer survivors? Well, I, I, in, in my experience, I wish I had known more about nutrition and I think every cancer patient would agree that normally doctors would just say you can eat everything in moderation. 
but really it, it's about changing your lifestyle changing the way you eat and what you eat and that's a work in progress for me uh, i'd like to shift to eating more plant-based meals so yes that aftercare program that we are offering soon so that, that that's very important for cancer patients because a lot of times I'll, cancer survivors would just really make do with whatever whatever is available right. so for the first time we're offering an aftercare program that is really holistic Pat, thank you so much for sharing your your very insightful journey. You will see more of Pat. And thank you for sharing your resilience and wisdom and for really providing valuable perspectives to all our um, to our audience. No? So Pat, anything that's in the pipeline for you? How can they get in touch with you? Well, I'm at um, you can get in touch with me through my Instagram account. That's Paths to Wellness. And um, through Better Days, of course, I'd be part of Better Days. We'll be creating programs and activities for you guys. Okay, so that concludes this episode of the Life Doula podcast. If this is something you find useful, please share it with your family or friends who may need it. Thank you for joining us. Until next time, Pat, stay happy, heal strong, and keep the real talk alive.